I shut my eyes, try not to speak, pretend that I'm dreaming. I smell your breath, not listening, but I still hear you screaming. Going under. One step away till you hear what I'm saying. Sounds like Hi guys and welcome back. So I'm so happy to be back actually because we have been you know on a little vacation recently and yeah I haven't filmed in I don't know a couple of weeks now. And I'm so ready to start filming again. I'm a little bit tired actually so this is why I'm so sleepy right now. Uh, I need a few days to accommodate myself um, you know with sleeping normal hours and yeah. So today's video will be a very chatty one. I will talk about our vacation, uh, you know, what countries we visited. I will also show you, you know, pictures when I will talk about things or just video clips. <laughs> okay, now I will just put this um, headband. And you know, I will just start doing my makeup. I don't even know what I will do today. Um, I guess, I don't know, something colorful maybe, maybe? What I know for sure though is that I really want to use a couple of new products that I got. So recently I bought these Peripera Ink Corrector and Ink Concealer, so here's the corrector. It's like a peachy one, I really want to try this like peachy correcting thing. And also the concealer which is a number two, also Korean, the Wonder Fun Park from Etude House. This is the Coral Fix. It's a mascara, it's a purple mascara, so it has this color and I'm very excited about this. I actually uh, bought the green one. Also recently I got a couple of new US uh, drugstore products and this is one of those. This is a Wet n Wild, how is this called? A liquid catsuit matte lipstick in the shade Nudie Patootie. I will actually film very soon a US drugstore makeup tutorial type of thing and also, you know, to show you uh, my thoughts and a little review. Then again, Korean Clio Gel Presso Waterproof Pencil. This is a pastel one, so again, it has this uh, purple lavenderish color. I will start with my Tarte Shape Tip Concealer in the shade Light Sand. I will use this as a eyeshadow base because I don't know I feel like it works really well with my skin on my eyes uh, it's not creasing it just holds the eyeshadow very very well so I really like to use these lately my concealers and not like a proper eyeshadow base I'm using as I have a 142 brush and then I also like to blend it with my face. Next I will take a Hakodo J552 3 brush and my lovely shade from the Kat Von D palette that I use all the time. This one, all over my eyelid. So about the trip. We went to uh, Fuerteventura and also to Paris. Um, so Fuerteventura we went at the end of March because for like uh, almost a week uh, because I found some really cheap flight tickets so you know I thought why not and Fuerteventura is quite cheap as an island as a resort type of island and then for hotels I mean you really can find some really really great deals so I mean why not to go there especially because they have a more of a constant uh, climate, I mean constant temperature, uh, so it's always nice. And it was really lovely, more on the windy side, uh, the temperature was nice, like 20, around 20, 25 degrees Celsius, uh, so it was warm, nice, beautiful, the beaches amazing amazing especially my favorite one was uh, yeah the Coralejo one Coralejo I think it's how it's called um, also I liked um, Playa de Cofete when you are you know in Coralejo on the beach you can see the Lobos island and also Lanzarote which is another big island um, and I mean 
the landscape is just incredible and the water is just so so clear and nice now I'm taking my 228 Zoeva brush and my Zoeva matte spectrum palette I will use uh, uh, I don't know this this shade yeah this one one thing that was crazy about our trip I mean not crazy but a bit more like unusual is that there are a lot of naked people there I mean on every beach uh, all over the island and it was a bit of a shock for us I mean not so much of a shock but because we you know we have been we have visited some uh, nudist uh, beaches in the past but um, there was so many nude, like nude, naked people on beaches uh, really young, like teenagers, uh, more mature people very very old people <laughs> and yeah, it was I don't know, it was a bit strange, I mean, to see so many naked and they are like all over the island, really on every beach you cannot really have a beach without naked people there so I can only imagine, you know, what is happening there in summer. <laughs> uh, and one thing that I loved about Fuerteventura, well, first of all, it's very cheap. Everything is cheap. Uh, the food also was very cheap, but I also liked the fact that um, there were not a lot of people on the beaches, actually. Um, maybe because of the season, I don't know but it was really really lovely and especially because we you know hired a car and we were traveling around island it was so much i don't know just fun and we visited the entire island so yeah i will show you you know some pictures videos with the beaches and especially in coralejo you have those uh, sand dunes really just incredible they also have the jandia uh, Playa de Jandia, I think it's called, or Playa Jandia, where they basically have a proper beach and also they have a very long lagoon uh, with just a little bit of water inside. People were doing, I mean, were surfing, uh, were kite surfing. Now I will use this red eyeshadow. We actually stayed in south in Moroable, but this is because, you know, our apartment was there and um, yeah. And, and I, I thought in the beginning that Mora Abla is probably the most beautiful place in Fuerteventura, but it's not. We arrived in Edinburgh after our Fuerteventura trip, and the next day we went to Paris. So we had another flight. And also in Paris uh, was my friend, one of my best friends, Elisa. Uh, you saw her in one of my pro makeup tutorials. So look at the difference. So this is a blended eyeshadow, and this is not. So just look how different they are. Uh, I always tell people blending is the key to a good uh, eye makeup. I mean, it's just probably the most important thing. The weather was just so lovely in Paris. I think April is the best month to actually go in Paris. Um, because there are lots of flowers around and the weather is just so nice and warm but not too too warm but one thing I do all the time when I'm in Paris and I walk like you know uh, on the streets uh, I mean I don't know Jardin de Tuileries um, around Palais Royal or something like this I always start <laughs> singing <laughs> Dis-moi pourquoi j'existerai Pour traîner dans un monde sans toi Sans espoir et sans regret Non, rien de rien Non, je ne regrette rien Oh, Champs-Élysées Oh, Champs-Élysées Au soleil, sur la pluie À midi ou à minuit Il y a tout ce que vous voulez Au Champs-Élysées I should add a little bit more color in here 
Now I'm a bit confused right now. Should I do a matte eye or to add some shimmer? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. So I will actually do a matte eye today. And I will use my Hapo Hodo J2 for 2D. And I will actually use this shade all over my eye. It's like a rusty brown type of color. So it will be a very reddish matte eye today. So in Paris we visited, uh, well, um, Chateau de Versailles, of course. Uh, this was actually my first time I visited Versailles and I actually met a subscriber when I was in Versailles uh, and every time I meet somebody you know that watches my YouTube videos I know it feels so strange and a bit awkward and she was like yeah this is you yes yes it's me but yeah she was very lovely and she had a really nice eye makeup on now we were staying near Opera Garnier and I think it took one hour, around one hour or like 40 minutes to arrive uh, at Versailles and there was such a big line, people were staying, I don't know, for hours maybe. I really liked the uh, library that we saw in Versailles, the girls library. Um, also. I don't know why the beds were so so small, like the king's beds, uh, and the girl's bed as well. I know the king was quite petite, I mean, it was not a tall man, uh, but still, for some reason, I think the beds were very very small. Versailles was really nice, but we also went to Musée de Louvre. You really actually need more than a day to visit everything, and especially if you want to read you know about uh, not each object but um, the, to read the information that they have there because it's very very useful and it's very interesting at least for me. Now my favorite part was the part with um, ancient Egypt. I was a bit disappointed though because they actually have only one movie there. Uh, I thought that we will see more. For some reason I was thinking that they have more. But it was only one displayed. Also a very interesting thing they had very old Egyptian uh, makeup containers, makeup things, um, just beauty things in general. They had actually little containers uh, where in the past um, people were creating, uh, you know, uh, eyeliners and you know all other like makeup things. It was very just fascinating. Also, they had on display mirrors and um, in the past they were using uh, metal a very very slick metal as a mirror uh, just really gorgeous pieces also hairbrush we saw as well as some um, like little tweezers a razor and some other you know things like this just fascinating I'm telling you. Then we saw the Greek, uh, those ancient Greek uh, sculptures uh, and statues and stuff like this. We saw Venus de Milo um, and just again the details how they were just making and creating such beautiful things in the past I have no idea. Uh, we visited the Napoleon III uh, apartment thingy part in Louvre um, and it just was so luxurious, beautiful like chandeliers, uh, sofas and stuff like this, chairs, <laughs> yeah very just, just screams luxury. Now I will add a bit more of this red on the lid. We saw the famous paintings as well, especially Mona Lisa. There were a lot of people around Mona Lisa. And when you look, you know, at the history of this painting, um, why it's so popular right now, because it was not popular in the past. Uh, it's just, I don't know. I don't think that it's something, you know, very, very special. I love some other paintings more. Okay, now for my lash line I will use my Morte Black Liquid Eyeliner, Pen Eyeliner. And I'm doing this 
well, when I don't use false lashes, I do this just to enhance my lash line, to make it blacker, fuller. And when I wear false lashes, I do this as well, just so that the lashes blend nicely with the false lashes. Now I'll use my mascara. I just started using my Deja Vu Lash uh, Knockout Mascara and I'm loving it. This is a Japanese brand. Right now I use only Japanese mascaras. I think they are just the best. And this is the brush. It's quite thick but um, just like brushes, you know, my lashes so nicely. Uh, so I kind of like the brush. And the formula is very, very black. I was using this actually when I was in our little vacation. Uh, and it's very long lasting indeed. I mean, I haven't noticed any like uh, small mascara flakes underneath or something like this or smudging. It stays amazing. Now for my brows, I will use, of course, my Archery Brow Tint and Precision Shaping Pencil. And I will, um, I mean, you can watch my eyebrow tutorial as I show you. I will use this in that video. Okay guys, so the eyebrows are done. And now I will go ahead and eat my lunch. And then I will be back. Okay. So, I am back. I just had a big, big salad with tuna and a lot of avocado and it was delicious. Well, and now I will just apply my false lashes. These are the um, Esquito Black Magic Lashes. And I will use my duo adhesive. And I just place a little bit of uh, lash glue on the lash band. I let it sit and dry a little bit for like a minute. Okay, now I'm taking my mirror really close to my face, otherwise I won't see anything. And I will just apply this. Really close to the lash line. Look at the final foundation. I will use today um, a mix of the Giorgio Armani Power Fabric and the Suku uh, Frame Fix Liquid Foundation in Lightness. And I actually apply just a little bit of the Suku one to make my perfect shade. Uh, and I'm using these two because um, I want to finish them. The Suko one I had for a long period of time, so yeah, I need to finish that foundation. So this is why I like to, you know, mix it with everything at the moment. I will actually finish my eyebrows with this Peripera Speedy Brow Cara the brush. is so so tiny. I will actually film very soon. Uh, a Korean beauty haul because oh boy I bought so many products okay now moving on to the corrector from Peri Pera oh this packaging is so nice I love this packaging and this the concealer is the same and they have different colors different correctors they have a blue one or more like a lavender one they have also a green one uh, it's actually very similar to my nail color um, I have uh, a gel nail polish from a Pew. So this is quite peachy. So, yeah, let's see how this will work. And then on top I will use the concealer. So I think, yeah, you should do it like this. Uh, let me use my beauty blender to blend this. This also should be very brightening, I guess. The concealer, and it has the same packaging. This almost looks like 
a bit taupey <laughs> in the bottle. It's not, it's just the bottle. This one is a bit darker than the corrector. And I will apply this in here. This is in the shade number two. Like you can see the difference. This is very peachy. <laughs> this is the foundation. Okay, now I will blend this top to see if it makes a difference. I almost feel like uh, the concealer is a bit more coverage because the corrector is not like so high coverage. This one has a good like medium coverage, I would say. Okay, so this was the concealer. I think that it looks very very bright underneath, very bright. Um, of course, if you have um, a little bit of eye bags like I have, you can still see yeah in here, you know, the it's like crease and stuff. But as for the color, it's very bright. Thing. Okay, now for powder, I will use my Chico Photo GSN 04 brush and my Innisfree No Sebum Mineral Powder. I recently again got this um, and I actually have the No Sebum Blur Powder again. This is how they look like. So this is a green packaging, this one is in whitish packaging. This one has a tint, uh, you can see in here. And the No Sebum one is just uh, trans translucent, it's a whitish you know, watch each type of powder. I like this more. It's so finely milled. This is one of the best powders I've ever tried. I like this more than some other like high-end powders that I've tried. This is amazing. And it's just so fine, so fine. It's a mineral powder, so no talc, which is always a bonus. A little bit underneath my eye. -dye. It will not change the color of your foundation. Sometimes I had that problem, you know, in the past. I do have combo skin, and this keeps my foundation fresh almost for like, I don't know, seven hours. I love this, love this a lot. Now, as a contour, I will use. Um, I had this with me when I was traveling, so this is why it's in this plastic box. My Senna Cosmetics uh, 90s palette, Raw Umber. This is the best thing ever. And I will use this uh, J5521 brush from Hakuhodo. And I will actually apply this a little bit on my forehead as well. And now as highlighter I will use, as I said, the Aurora palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. And, and I will use my favorite brush for highlighting. This is my Chico Hodo highlight brush. And I will actually use Eclipse. These have the same formula as the other um, palettes from the Silver the Hills that I have. Um, the same like, creamy type of formula. It's very intense. And actually, let me swatch a couple of the colors. Here are actually some of the shades. Very, very pretty. When you blend these, uh, you know, on your face, it's not, I mean, the color is not so obvious. And some of these have some tiny glitter particles, but you cannot really see them on the face. I mean, they just go away. Okay, now let's finish the eyes. I will use this shade. Again, this like uh, orangey type of shade. And I will apply this underneath my eyes. And now I will add a little bit of this orange, a darker orange shade. And now I will just blend these two together. Okay. okay, now the fun part. I will use my Gel Presso Pastel uh, Eyeliner. On the box it says that it is an upper liner, so I don't think that it is safe for the waterline. But uh, I will take this risk, thank you. And this is how it looks like. Very pastel -y. Very excited to use this. So let's see. 
And now I will use the mascara. Let's see if this has the same color. No, it's not the same. It's a bit more... It's not as pastel, I guess. Well... So, let's see how this will work. Okay, so I applied three layers and I still don't know if it looks good or not. <laughs> I'm very confused. It's not like I imagined this, you know, how I imagined this uh, will look, but um, maybe I should apply another layer, but I feel like it's too clumpy right now. It's getting pretty clumpy. Um, it's not as covering. I mean, the coverage is not the coverage is not the best for a, a colorful, you know, mascara. Okay, now let's apply the Wet n Wild uh, lipstick in Nudy Patooty. So it looks like that grayish type of shade. Okay, so I will just take this off and I will apply a lip pencil before. Yeah, this is just too, too neat. And I will use my um, Perfect Nude from Too Faced, Perfect Lips. Okay, and now let's try to apply this again, but more lightly, I would say. This shade actually looks a bit more darker when it's dry, maybe you can see here as well. And I really like this color. Yeah, it's very nude, it's very zombie-ish, but I love it. Now that I'm looking, you know, this makeup, mm, it's kind of fun. This mascara looks kind of okay. Mm, not as I expected it to be, but it's okay. So you guys, that was it. I hope you enjoyed watching this um, very chatty makeup tutorial. I will see you very soon. Take care and bye.